Are we willing to believe that love is the strongest thing in the world? If I decorate my house perfectly with plaid bows, strands of twinkling lights, and shiny balls, but do not show love to my family, I'm just another decorator. Some from scripture, some from poets, uh, some old poets, some new poets, some alive poets, some dead poets. May the peace of Christ be with you. We are delighted to have our annual treat of the John Nielsen Trio, and it's wonderful to have you gentlemen in our midst today. We look forward to more beautiful music. Uh, John's has a long history with Bethel Church in that uh, his mom was the music director here for many years, and um, apples don't fall too far from the tree. He also happens to be uh, the brother of Kathy Toma. Uh, so we're delighted that you are here with us today, John. It's just a real treat for us. And I'm delighted that there are those of you who may be um, still waking up and a little fuzzy-eyed since this is New Year's Day. Those of you who are joining us via Zoom or Facebook know that wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. And it is a delight to be together that we can celebrate and bring in this new year with the gifts of of music and song and poetry. This is not your typical Bethel worship service, but it does give you a feel for the way in which we like to be able to embrace an eclectic way of worshiping the God of life who gives us all of the gifts, including music. Today, uh, our service will, um, will be a, a, a combination of readings, some from scripture, some from poets, uh, some old poets, some new poets, some alive poets, some dead poets, you know, so it's not the dead poet society, but we will uh, enjoy the wisdom uh, captured in words throughout the year. And uh, we're grateful that, that Chad's made his way down from his celebration with his family and even brought his parents to uh, increase our, our attendance by probably at least 5%, so it's nice to Nice to see you this morning, um, and as you're able, I would ask you to join and stand, if you can, uh, to sing the song, which we've sung a number of times now. It's called Sing a Different Song. It's really kind of spunky and light. It's got beautiful words, um, and it's fun to sing. So as you're able, uh, I invite you to stand for Sing a Different Song. different song to welcome and warn. Sound a different shout now, Christmas is here. Christmas, Christmas is here. Fill the earth and the, sun, the sky with the news from on. Children shout that all may come. is here love without condition love without fear with the humble and poor with the shy and unsure love a different love let Christ be the cure dance a different dance now Christmas is here dance a dance of war on suffering and Justice are one in the light of the sun. Dance a different dance, God's race has begun. You may be seated. Join your hearts and minds and spirits together with me as I offer an opening prayer. Holy God, our calendars tell us this, this is the beginning of a new year. 
And the sacred time of our liturgical calendar tells us that the year began the first Sunday of Advent in November. And there are often times when it feels like the culture and our faith can be at odds with one another. This is a day to know that there are new beginnings wherever we are on life's journey, that faith you can bring it alive, you can make it new, you can help us to see the opportunities that maybe we can't see ourselves for this upcoming year, but we pray that it become a year of more peace, more kindness, more hopefulness, and less illness as we move into 2023. Bless our time together and bless the lives of all who have come to this place to give you thanks and praise. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and say together, Amen. Over the years, I've put together some readings that are just particular for this season, and I'm delighted that uh, Nikki can help us bring some of those words alive today. Good morning. Good morning. Our first uh, scripture reading today comes from 1 Corinthians 13, chapter, uh, verses 13. It's a Christmas version. If I decorate my house perfectly with plaid bows, strands of twinkling lights, and shiny balls, but do not show love to my family, I'm just another decorator. If I slave away in the kitchen baking dozens of Christmas cookies, preparing gourmet meals and arranging a beautifully adorned table at mealtime, but do not show love to my family, I'm just another cook. If I work at the soup kitchen, carol in the nursing home, and give all that I have to charity, but do not show love to my family, it profits me nothing. If I trim the spruce and sh with shimmering angels and crocheted snowflakes, attend a myriad of holiday parties and sing in the choir's cantana, but do not focus on Christ, I have missed the point. Love stops the cooking to hug the child. Love sets aside decorating to kiss the husband. Love is kind though harried and tired. Love doesn't envy another's home that has coordinated Christmas china and table linens. Love doesn't yell at the kids to get out of the way, but is thankful they are there to be in the way. Love doesn't give only to those who are able to give in return, but rejoices in giving to those who can't. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Video games will break. Pearl necklaces will get lost. Golf clubs, they'll rest. But giving the gift of love will endure.
Good morning. I'm going to share a poem with you by Henry Van Dyke called Keeping Christmas. There is a better thing than the observance of Christmas, and that is keeping Christmas. Are we willing to forget what we have done for other people 
and to remember what other people have done for us, to ignore what the world owes us and to think what we owe the world, to put our rights in the background and our duties in the middle distance and our chances to do a little more than our duty in the foreground, to see that men and women are just as real as we are and try, not, and try to look behind their faces to their hearts hungry for joy, to own up to the fact that probably the only good reason for our existence is not what we are going to get out of life, but what we are going to give life. To close our book of complaints against the management of the universe and look around us for a place where we can sow a few seeds of happiness. Are we willing to do these things even for a day? Then we can keep Christmas. Are we willing to stoop down and consider the needs and desires of little children to remember the weakness and the loneliness of people growing old? To stop asking how much our friends love us and ask ourselves whether we love them enough? To bear in mind the things that other people have to bear in their hearts to try to understand that those who live in the same home with us to really want without waiting for them to tell us to really want to understand them to trim our lamp so that it will give more light and less smoke and to carry it in front so that our shadow will fall behind us to make a grave for our ugly thoughts and a garden for our kindly feelings with the gate open. Are we willing to do these things even for a day? Then we can keep Christmas. Are we willing to believe that love is the strongest thing in the world? Stronger than hate, stronger than evil, stronger than death? and that the blessed life which began in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago is the image and the brightness of eternal love. Then we can keep Christmas. And if we can keep it for a day, why not always? But we can never keep it alone.
Thank you.
So as a, as a bass player, I am always stunned at the bass player that we have here because not only can he play more than one instrument, uh, he plays it amazingly well. And Mike, I'd never met you as a percussionist, but I've always loved percussion. And after the service, I'm going to have to ask you to tell me about all those toys because it's just amazing the kind of sounds that you make. And of course, John, I'm sitting here thinking, how does he keep all of that in his head? And maybe it's that it just comes out of your spirit and your soul and your head. I'm just guessing. Is that a, can I get a witness on that? Yeah, that's what I, I thought. So thank you. I'm going to share a, a poem um, by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And one of the things I like about Henry Wadsworth Longfellow is that he and I both went to the same college and the library that I went to bears his name. Um, we weren't there at the same time, but uh, <laughs> so hear this poem entitled Three Kings. Three kings came riding from far away, Melchior and Gaspar, Balthazar. Three wise men out of the east were they, and they traveled by night and they slept by day, for their guide was a beautiful wonderful slide star the star was so beautiful large and clear that all of the other stars of the sky became a white mist in the atmosphere and by this they knew that the coming was near of the prince foretold in the prophecy three caskets they bore on their saddle bows three caskets of gold with golden keys their robes were crimson silk with rows of bells and pomegranates and furbelows, their turbans like blossoming almond trees. And so the three wise men rode into the west. Through the dusk of the night, over the hill and dell, and sometimes they nodded with beard on breast, and sometimes talked as they paused to rest and with the people they met at some wayside well. Of the child that is born, said Balthazar, good people, I pray you, tell us the news, for we in the east have seen his star and have ridden fast and have ridden far to find and worship the king of the Jews. And the people answered, you ask in vain, we know of no king but Herod the Great. They thought the wise men were men insane as they spurred their horses across the plain like riders in haste who cannot wait. And when they came to Jerusalem, Herod the Great, who had heard this thing, sent for the wise men and questioned them and said, Go down into Bethlehem and bring me tidings of this new king. So. They rode away, and the star stood still, the only one in the gray of morn. Yes, it stopped. It stood still on its own free will, right over Bethlehem on the hill, the city of David, 
where Christ was born. And the three, the three kings rode through the gate and the guard, through the silent street till their horses turned and neighed as they entered the great inn-yard. The windows were closed and the doors were barred and the only light in the stable burned. And cradled there in the scented hay, in the air made sweet by the breath of kine, a little child lay in the manger, the child that would be king one day of a kingdom not human, but divine. His mother, Mary of Nazareth, sat watching beside his place of rest, watching the even flow of his breath. For the joy of life and the terror of death were mingled together in her breast. They laid their offerings at his feet. The gold was their tribute to a king. The frankincense with its odor sweet was for the priest, the paraclete, the myrrh for the body's burying. And the mother wondered and bowed her head and sat as still as a statue of stone. Her heart was troubled, yet comforted, remembering what the angel had said of an endless reign and of David's throne. Then the kings rode out of the city gate with a clatter of hoofs in proud array, but they went not back to Herod the Great. For they knew his malice and feared his hate and returned to their homes by another way. As you're able, I would invite you to stand and sing We Three Kings of Orient Are. You'll see the words projected on the screen. As you're able, I would invite you to stand and sing together. Three kings of Orient are bearing his traverse of mountain following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward lead. Still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever ceasing, never over us all to reign. Oh, star. Guess what? One more verse. Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume. Breathe the life of gathering bloom. Sorrow sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone cold tomb. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect. 
perfect life. I'm going to share with you a scripture reading from John 14, verses 15 through 17 and 25 through 27. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him because he abides in you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Our next reading is by uh, Dr. Maya Angelou, Amazing Peace. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Floodwaters await our, in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves. What have we done to so affront nature? We interrogate and worry God. Are you there? Are you there really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor, come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Floodwaters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth brightening all things, even hate, which crouches breeding in dark corridors. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first it is too soft, then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now, louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for, not just the absence of war, but true peace, a harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We, Baptists and Buddhists, Methodists and Muslims, say, come, peace. Come and fill us, with, fill us and our world with your majesty. We, the Jew and the Jainist, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time. 
a halting of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at each other and then into ourselves, and we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, my soul. In the spirit of peace, I don't know about you, but that just sort of resonated in my gut, the need for peace. And in the pre-pandemic time, when there was an opportunity for us to celebrate the work of the church with offertory and with the passing of the plate, we, we sort of do it virtually, knowing that there are opportunities to support the work of our church. And this is an opportunity to invite you to give generously, as many of you have throughout 2022. And as I've said probably more often than you want to hear, it's, it's nothing less than a miracle that we are doing uh, as well. And we are still here on the corner of Sixth and Watson, um, and we will continue to be here, uh, a progressive voice and ministry uh, for Beaverton and beyond. So I invite you to provide a, a gift that can support our church. You can do it online. Our website has an e-giving uh, tab. You can write a check and drop it in the plate. There are offering plates at either door as you exit the sanctuary. Um, you can drop by the church office, which is still open from nine to three, except not tomorrow because it's the holiday observed. So I hope that you will consider and prayerfully continue to contribute to the life of the church.
Pray with me. Holy One, the gifts that we gather physically here and the gifts that we gather through electronic means may, however we gather them, be blessed and dedicated to the bringing of the good news of your love for all people, that we may be those who can carry forward and live out peace and hope and joy, and above all, love. Make it so, holy God. In the name of that baby Jesus who grew to be a prophetic, radical teacher and healer who is among us even now through the power of your Holy Spirit. And the people were heard to say, Amen. Holy One, we gather our hearts and minds and spirits together now remembering that Jesus' followers, those first ones, struggled to know how to pray. So they said, Rabbi, teach us to pray. And he offered this prayer. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next reading is called um, Work of Christmas Begins by Howard Thurman. When the songs when the song of angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with the flocks, then the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal those broken in spirit, to feed the hungry, to release the oppressed to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among all peoples, to make a little music with the heart, and to radiate the light of Christ every day, in every way, in all that we do and in all that we say. Then the work of Christmas begins. The message of the Feast of Epiphany announces to all people everywhere, rise up in splendor, your light has come, the glory of the Lord shines upon you. Let the work of Christmas begin, and let it begin with you. 
Now I would invite you as you're able to stand for one of my favorite hymns, Go Tell It on the Mountain. I think this... My friends, you can go tell it on a mountain. You can tell it in your living room. You can tell it at Trader Joe's. You can tell it at Safeway. You can tell it wherever you are. And most importantly, say it with how you act towards other people because actions speak louder than words. So live it. God's love is for you. And the people were heard to say, Amen. You those of you who have been with the church for a while know that John Bentley was, a, was kind of a pillar of our church, one of the most dedicated people. John passed away a few weeks ago at the ripe age of 92. And next Saturday, on the 7th of January, we will celebrate his life here in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock in the morning. So I hope that you'll come and celebrate uh, John Bentley's life um, because he was such a terrific human and will continue to, his legacy will live on in and through us. So now let us hear finally from the John Nielsen trio, and it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 